Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and happy 2021 to everybody that is joining me, well, since 2020. So, this is an update on some interesting stuff that came out about SpaceX's super heavy, you know, slash Starship. So, to make a disambiguation, right, Starship is the thing that's already flown and has been test flown and crashed spectacularly. Uh, in which everyone cheered on because it was an achievement in many ways, even though it failed to stick the landing. Now, Super Heavy is the booster that is supposed to carry this, so this is the lower stage. I have built a sort of Kerbal version, and I'm going to admit right away the proportions on this are not correct, because I'm just trying to build something that flies so I can demonstrate some uh, you know, critical features. Everybody else, they use Blender and other stuff. They have mad skills. I wasted all that time learning science. So I'm playing video games instead. How does that work? So Super Heavy is going to mass about 3,500 tons. It's going to mass more than the Saturn V. It's going to have something like uh, 28 Raptor engines and it will carry the Starship second stage up to an altitude where it can then kick in with all six of its Raptor engines, three vacuum, three sea level, and carry that into orbit. And then, of course, it will do the now familiar SpaceX trick of turning around and using its rockets to land back at the base. But there's something that came up um, in the last few days, a comment by Elon that makes a radical change to how this works. So Falcon 9, as you've probably seen many times, it can land on the drone ship, it can land on the barge, it has these big landing legs that fold out and they have shock absorbers and crush cores to absorb the force. These big legs, they're some of the largest pieces of carbon fiber composites that are made on a regular basis. They're really massive if you look at people, think, you know, look next at people. The grid fins are titanium, the largest single forged pieces of titanium, according to Elon Musk. Starship, the grid fins will be way bigger. They will be welded stainless steel. And I've seen images of these that show them. They're like, you know, nine meters long. They're, some people talk about grid fins and say they look a bit like fly swatters. Well, these are big enough that you can swat light aircraft out of the sky. Seriously, there's a reason we have range safety. So Elon's big announcement uh, is that instead of having big landing legs for Super Heavy, they would really like to use the grid fins as landing devices. And that seems a little crazy because they're obviously all the way up there, but they are structurally sound. What they want to do is instead of having landing legs that go down on the ground, they will have a device near the launch pad which catches the grid fins and keeps the bottom of the rocket off the ground, which helps in many ways. I mean, there's so many ways this helps. The main reason why you wouldn't do it is because it's staggeringly difficult to get this level of landing precision. In fact, here's me totally faking it in Kerbal Space Program. You know how I did that? I played the video in reverse. But assuming you can get that level of precision, the advantages are that you've shifted a lot of weight off of your launch vehicle and onto the launch stand. You now no longer need big shock absorbers on the vehicle. Those can be on the stand and they can have a much larger travel range. You can also design your capture rig so that the engines remain as far off the ground as possible and include a water sound suppression system. Because, you know, of course, during re-entry and landing and retropropulsion, you've got a lot of thermal energy impacting on the back of the rocket. But the real point where the engines get damaged is when they are brought to within you know, meters off the ground and the shock waves from that thrust are reflecting back off into the engine bay. I mean, we saw an engine get damaged on serial number eight when they were doing a static fire test. Remember when we were concerned that the oxygen header tank might explode? And another reason cited by Elon is post-vehicle processing and return to the launch site, which should be really fast if you're pretty much landing on the launch site. It's also interesting to note that the official SpaceX animation doesn't show this. They carefully avoid showing this. So I'm wondering if that was on the books back then. You, you do get to see the large grid fins, which are actually really good designs if you're wanting to build a system that captures with imperfect alignment. If you think about it, you've got a lot of holes in there and you just need a bunch of posts that will slip up between the grid fins and lock the thing in place. This is very similar to what the Soviet Union planned for their docking in lunar orbit. 
But the obvious downside is that if something goes wrong during the landing, you're not just out a launch vehicle and a bit of concrete, you have to rebuild your entire launch stand. So you, for safety reasons, for operational reasons, you probably have to build multiple launch stands just to make sure that you can keep up your cadence. Remember, one of the critical things about Starship is the whole orbital refueling capability. And that means you need to be re able to reliably launch like half a dozen launch vehicles within a day or so to make sure that you can refuel your vehicle quickly enough to head off on its grand voyage to the moon or wherever where it wants to go. Now we've all become familiar with the Falcon 9 landings and they do look amazingly precise, but when the barges come back to port, it's clear that they're all over the barges. So you might wonder, can they really get this level of precision? And I, I just say, I don't know, it's obviously a big call. But the Super Heavy will have one big advantage over the Falcon 9. It will be able to hover. The Falcon 9 has too much thrust and it cannot uh, perform a hover. So it has to perform a continuous deceleration and end up exactly on the landing pad. Whereas Super Heavy will have much more time to adjust its course and make sure that it is able to put itself in position. So I think that it's probably possible, but I still say it will be very impressive when they actually do it. Having special equipment to capture a rocket and slow it down to a safe velocity is not a new idea. This patent was granted in the 1950s, and this is why you should ignore all those patents from the US Navy uh, labs which talk about anti-gravity and things like that, because you don't actually need to demonstrate something works to patent it. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that you know, point out that all of Elon Musk's big innovations are actually old ideas from other people, and you know, there's a certain amount of truth to it. But in most cases, these previous ideas were never convincing enough to actually get funded or were considered too dangerous, too radical, you know, too likely to fail. And when you're throwing your own money around, I guess you can afford to bet big on ideas which other people have thrown away as too risky. Risky. And the gains on a landing like this are definitely up there, but you have to get your navigation down 100% or you have to put in a lot of launch sites to make sure you can deal with launch site and landing site attrition. There is another comment that was telling about how they're going to use helium pressure. And if you remember, they had specifically said they were not going to need to use helium pressure and they didn't want to use it. But it looks like they're still having problems with their autogenous pressurization. And the fact that they had low pressure in the fuel header tank, which caused the serial number eight failed landing, uh, is probably a good indication that they're trying to do something, you know, whatever it takes just to get this thing flying and landing. Given how fast they moved on from the SN8 crash to SN9, I'd speculated it was some. Uh, the problem was something that they really understood well and something that they could fix without the vehicle being in the high bay. And I, I had actually thought it was something as simple as perhaps sequencing their valves incorrectly and then causing part of the system to either be overpressured or underpressure and fail. But I, it's entirely possible that maybe they had the helium stuff set up on hand or that it's easy enough to kind of plumb that into their existing pressurant system. Either way, we are expecting SpaceX to continue into the new year with their high risk, high reward strategy, which will lead to quite a few spectacular moments like the end of SN8. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.